OK, good evening. Thanks. Today we speak about uh, three things. Please, uh, be quiet. OK. Thanks. Today we speak about three things. The first one is uh, what is a version control system. The second is what is Git as a version control system. And the third one, if we are lucky and the internet work, we'll try to do something with Git right now. So let's start from version control system in general. What are and what problems they try to solve? Let's start with a question. How do you share and save data? And we put it in a context. I have a project on my laptop, this here. Sorry. And I'm working solo. I have a project, and I carry on this project alone with my only one computer. So to be really sure that all my data is safe, all my project is safe, is reliable, is always present, I need at least several things. First of all, I need backup. I need to backup my computer, my project, just in case my computer broke or is stolen. Then I need to save a different version to be able to recover previous version, not only the last one, but maybe the last working version of one week ago. And consequently, I need early and frequently saving. What can I use? A lot of things. External hard driver, Dropbox, dedicated folder, and so on. But I have two problems little problems. The first is, what is, what happens if I forget to save a specific version and then tomorrow, after one week, I need it? Because I add a new functionality that broke another functionality. If I don't save that specific version, I don't have any more a working version of my program. And then what happens if I delete or lose a previous version? There's nothing is not rocket science. It's something that I have to remember to do. Save, always save, make backup, make multiple copies of my project, and so on. Second case, things a little bit more complex. I'm still working solo. I'm still working on my only one project. But I have two computers, one laptop here, and maybe a desktop at home or in my office. So what I need for each computer is similar to before. I need backup. I need a different saved version. I need early and frequent saving. But I need also convention on file name to share a project between two different computers and be able to get the specific version on one computer or in another. What can I use similar to before? USB memory stick, USB, uh, hard drive, Dropbox, shared folder between the computer, and so on. Possible problem, more or less the same as before. What happens if I forget to save a specific version and then I need it? What happens if I delete or lose? a previous version. What happens if I forget to copy one version from one computer to another, and then I lose one of the two computers, for example? Or what happens if I have a different project in the same workspace? I have some project on my laptop, some other projects on my desktop, and maybe some other projects that are shared between the two computers. Again, nothing really terrible, nothing really not rocket science. I have to remember to do all these things every time. 
Third case, I'm working in a team. And maybe I am here in Italy, this one is in England, and this one in somewhere in the United States. So, on one project. Everyone is working on the same project. What you need for each computer, the same as before, backup, different saved version, early frequency saving. We need that everyone perform this operation. Moreover, we need a convention on file names that are shared between the team. Because, for example, if I call my project, project one, underscore, 2015-03-23, 6 p.m. Is 6 p.m. in Italy, in England, or where this person is in the United States? With, with the date, which date, which time? We have to agree on something, on something. Again, what we can use, USB memory stick, external driver, Dropbox folder, shared folder, emails, and so on. Much more problems. What happens if one of the team members forgets to save a specific version and then someone else needs it? What happens if someone deletes or loses a version? Or if someone forgets to share between the team members a specific version of the project? And other issue, who has the latest version of the program? I have a version here, and I share the version via mail with this other two person. And in the same time, when I click send, I receive another mail from one of these with another version of the, of the program, which is the latest version. Who is in, chair, in change to handle conflict? to take these two versions and merge together the changes. Moreover, who has the right to edit? Maybe I want that this person can only see the code, but not editing the code. And how in this system we can ensure that everyone, at any time, see the up-to-date version of everything? Not one program with one file of source code. Maybe one program with 100,000 of files. Version control system try to solve this problem, especially in team work. The definition of version control system is that our system that record changes to a file or a set of file over time from day zero to day 11 and so on so that anybody can recall a specific version at any possible time. We had, a, in history, we can say three generations of uh, version control system. The first one is local version control system, nobody uses anymore. The second type is centralized and is still used today like a subversion or Microsoft Team Foundation server. And most of the developer, most of the people, uses now a distributed version control system like Git or Mercurial. So before, to understand what is a version control system and how it works, we need some basic concept. First of all, this is how we how I represent a repository. A repository is a place where you store all your work. It contains every single version of your work that has ever existed in terms of file, in terms of uh, directory layout, in terms of history, in terms of changes between files. And can be, let me highlight this can be, shared by a whole team, depending on the type of version control system. Then we have the opposite, a working copy, this triangle here. A working copy is the snapshot of the repository that is well used for working. 
and is the places where changes happen is, is the copy of a portion of the repository that is on your computer where you work. It's private. And it also contains some metadata so that uh, it can keep track of how things change. A file is modified or not. This is a new file, this is a deleted file, and so on. For moving things between the working copy and the repository, the operation is named commit. Commit is an operation that is atomically performed, or it succeed, or it not succeed, to assure the, the integrity of the repository. And associated to this uh, uh, operation, it's typical to provide a log message, a comment, that say what is the content of, the, of, the, of that commit. So to explain the changes that you have made on the specific piece of work. And those, those messages becomes part of the entire history on the repository. The opposite operation is named update. You take data from the repository and you update your snapshot on your computer. In a centralized version control system, this is what happened. You have one repository, only one, and every team member as a working copy. So each working copy commit on the repository, and each working copy update from the repository. There are some advantages and some disadvantages, like, for example, that in this case, you can have only one repository. If you want to have an internal, internal to the industry, repository and an external public repository, you cannot, basically. Distributed version control system solve, with a little bit of uh, complexity, this problem. How? It defines two types of repository, a local repository and a remote repository. They are repository as the other in the centralized version control system. But each team member has on its own computer a working copy and a full copy of the repository. Then, somewhere, it may be a remote repository, this one. It's not mandatory. Here, sorry. Here, it's mandatory, this repository. Here, no. You can use this as a remote repository if you want. And in this case, it's also possible to have one, to have more than one repository, remote repository, known on your own computer. And we have to add two more basic concepts. The first one is the push operation. That is, I take the changes in my local repository, and I synchronize the changes, and I put the changes on the remote repository. It's the equivalent of the commit, but between repositories. The other operation is pull. I take everything from the remote repository, and I update my local repository. And then I can update my working copy. Git is a distributed version control system. Was born on 2005 for handling the Linux kernel. Has been created by the same person who created, the, who created Linux, and is, think, is thought to be used via command line. This is the, the website. Uh, well, it's free, it's open source, it's distributed, it's efficient to handle large projects. And uh, it's a little bit secure for authentication, authentication of the history. Well, you, you who is Git? A lot of people. So how to get started with Git? Standard installation, it's on the website. It's available from, for all the platforms. 
In, at this link, you can also find some graphical uh, application. For this course, Git is integrated in Eclipse, thanks to the eGit plugin that should be already installed in the standard Eclipse version, and is already installed in Ladispe. If you want to install Git on your own computer, well, on Windows, you have to go to the website and download it and double click on the file and next, 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 finish, and you have Git. On Linux and Mac, probably is already installed. You can check by typing in the command line git. Otherwise, you can install it from the, the website or from the package manager, for example, in, uh, in Linux. Now, if the, the Wi-Fi start working, I would like to show you an example. Otherwise, we will continue on the slide. Let's try. OK, how Git works? We try to put ourselves in this situation. We have one person here in Italy and one person here in England. They have uh, their own computer and they have a central server that is a remote repository. They want to realize a new software in Python. So the first thing to do is to create a remote repository. In GitHub, there is a web interface in, a, in most uh, services that provide a remote repository. There are a web interface where you compile a form and you create a repository. By command line, you have to write uh, on the server git init minus minus bear the name of the repository. For example, my project.git. Then, when a central repository is created, a person can start working on its project. And this we can do. So, for example, I okay. I create a folder on the desktop and I call it my project. For example, it's here. And inside my project I create a Python file, for example that I call main.py here. And uh, in main.py, I wrote uh, print uh, hello. OK. And I have my program. I developed something. Punto. I developed something, and now I want to share everything I did. So to initialize a Git repository in this project, in this folder, I have to type git, that is the name of the command, init. This initializes an empty Git repository in the folder. That is a hidden folder named .git. Then I have to tell git that uh, I want this file, this main.py, on version control. So what I do is write git add 
that is, please take care of my file, git add main.py. Nothing changed. Then if I type git status, that uh, let me see the entire status of the Magit, the Magit uh, working copy here, I see that I have a new file. Trust me, you see that I have a new file in green named main.py. This file what I did is this. I have a file in the working copy. Before committing the file, I have to say, dear Git, please, this is my file, take care. And the, the, the way in which Git do this is to adding the file to a staging area. So if, you, if I want to add a new file, or if, if I want to say to Git, uh, uh, this is a modified file, this is a deleted file, I have to put it in the staging area. Then I can commit the file from the staging area to the repository, to the local repository. So we added the file so we can commit the file. Git commit minus m, and here we have to digit a message, something that say what I do, what I did. So for example, initial commit, because I have uh, no fantasy now. Git say, OK, one file changes, one insertion. I created mod uh, 100644 for main.py. If I type git status, as before, I see that it's written nothing to commit working directory clean. I have take everything and put on my local repository. Now, if I want to take all these and put on a remote repository, I have to perform two operations. The first one is say to git that uh, where is the remote repository? What's its name? So that he can move files from my computer to a remote repository. To do this, the git command is git remote, because it's a remote repository, add, because we want to add a new remote repository, and then git wants a repository name, like origin, and an internet address that now we don't have. So. Each HTTP or HTTPS uh, something like github.com uh, slash MEI 2015, uh, my project that uh, let's retry with the internet. Okay, I say to Git, you have one remote now. The remote is named origin, and its address is https uh, github.com uh, slash something. Now, if I want to synchronize my local repository with the remote repository, I have to type git push, as before. Since this is the time we push on a new re remote, I can also write minus u, that is a way to say to Git, please set up everything, set up all the needed information to perform any other operation on this repository. And then I have to type origin, that is the name of the, repos of the remote repository I created, and master. And then I cannot do this operation because we don't have internet now. But 
Uh, what is master? Uh, a Git repository is, uh, you have to see the, a Git repository like a tree, a tree with several branches. By default, a Git repository, local and remote, has one branch. That is the master branch. This, this one, master. You can have several branches that start from master or that cannot start, that not start from master. It's not important. And in the same way, you can have multiple remote repository. The first, by convention, remote repository is called origin. It's always called origin, the first, the principle, the main remote repository. Now, if I, if I was able to press, uh, to perform this operation, and I not, I could go on uh, github.com, MI 2015, and so on, and see all my code, the code I shared. Now, imagine that here I create a new file that I called to do, and I wrote uh, something. Something, I don't know. Then I close and save this file. Now, this is my personal to-do. This is my private to-do. I don't want to share this to the file with anyone. But if I type git status, I see now that git recognize that there is a new file named todo.txt and say to me, if you want to commit it, please add. I don't want to add, now and forever. So there is a way to say to Git, uh, please ignore this file forever, yes. And this method is to create a new file named .gitignore, and inside this file .gitignore, write the name of the file, the extension of the file, the name of the folder that I don't want to put in, in version control. So for example, I can write uh, to do.txt. If I add this to do, this, sorry, this git ignore, Sorry. I brought uh, git ignote. Okay. Uh, to do dot txt. If I add this uh, dot git ignore and uh, I type git status I see that uh, the to do file is not anymore listed here there is only a new file dot git ignore but is present this is still present in my folder so I can commit this change add git ignore and push, uh, and you imagine that I push the file, the repository. Okay. Now, I have this project on my remote repository. What I need to do, what another person of the team needs to do to start working in repository. So, for example, let's change uh, environment, no, and 
press the right icon. I have to go in the, in the folder where I would like to put my project and write git, not pull, because I don't have a repository on my own computer, not init, because I don't want to create an empty new repository, but clone. Git clone the internet address of the repository to clone, so the remote repository to clone. HTTPS, for example, github.com slash and so on, dot git. If I perform this operation, my project dot git. If I perform this operation, I will have on my computer a new folder that is named my project dot git with everything that uh, I did uh, on the Windows. If I don't like the name, because for example, I don't want uh, on this computer a folder named my project, I can simply add another argument to this uh, line and digit the new name, so first project, for example. And this command will create a new folder named first project linked with the remote repository with everything inside. Okay. If I would like to have all the history of the repository, I can type git log, and with git log, I see every repository, every hist all the history from the repository. So here I have two commits, one initial commit, one is add git ignore, and they see all of, the, all of these. Uh, another thing, I told, told you two things. The first one is that you have to, every time a file is modified, you have to add it to the staging area and then you can commit it. It's true, but there is a shortcut to do this only with modified file. So if I modify the main.py, for example, and I brought uh, hello world, and I save and close all this, and I type git status, I see that uh, git recognized main.py is modified. So I can type git add main.py, and then git commit minus m a message, or I can write git commit, minus am a message. This a stands for add, the modified files. So, uh, add word to string. OK. Uh, the other things, the other thing that uh, I told you is that uh, Okay. Now, imagine that uh, I have this project here, and I would like to take all the modification that I performed now. I add Word to the print L Word on this computer. I have to type git pull, because I already have my project here. If I type git pull, it is different, as I said before. You synchronize the remote repository with your local repository and also update the working copy. In Git, you don't have to do pull and update. 
you do only pull to have everything updated. In Git, the operation that I before called pull is named fetch. Fetch take the changes from the remote repository and put it in the local repository. Stop. The pull operation take the changes from the remote repository, perform a fetch toward the local repository, and then update the working copy. Now, another case. I, uh, I wrote something, I put something on the remote repository, and another one is working on their own computer. He performs some modification and commit everything and try to do git push, as before. And git tell him this message, error, failed to push. This is a conflict. Why? Because the version in which this person starts working is not anymore the latest version that is online. Because someone else updated th those versions. So, how to overcome this situation after modifying some file? Well, you have to perform a pull take all the changes, and then you can perform a commit and push. Now, the result of this pool can be of two types. The first type, the first result is everything go well. Git was able to merge your code with the code that is different and that is online, or the merge does not go well, and you have to handle the conflict by end. So a merge with conflict, when you perform a pull operation, Git will present you this error. Automatic merge failed, fix conflict, and then commit and push the result. And Git highlights the difference, the conflicts in this way. A lot of minor with head, some code, a lot of equals, some other code, and a lot of major. This code here and this code here is what perform a conflict. It's the same line, for example, of code in which one person wrote hello and the other person wrote hello world, and Git is not able to say, okay, the right version is hello or hello world, please do something. And you have to do something by end. This happens, not a lot, but happens. After resolving the conflict, one can commit, add the commit, and push the result. Well, some other useful command. We see git add, and there is also git remove. To remove a file from the disk and from version control system. There is a move or rename command, that is git move. There is a reset command, that is ignore my modification, my last edit, and Take again everything from the repository, local or remote. And you can also change your latest commit. I forgot something, I add something to my latest commit, and then I type git commit minus minus amend. Similar operation on the remote, git remote show all the list of remote, git remote add, we see, add the new remote, git remote show, show the internet address of a specific remote, rename, well, rename, and remove, remove a, a remote repository. Git has other two properties. One, it tags, and the other, I already see, it's branch. 
tag and branches are, can be local and or remote. In Git, there is not a mapping between a local branch, you can have a master branch here, and then a new feature branch here on this computer, but only a master branch on a remote repository. And the same happens for tags. They doesn't push automatically. If you create a branch different from the master and type git push, it will push the master branch only. Tags. Tags are useful to mark a release point. I would like to tag this version of the software, version one, for example. In Git, there are of two types, complete uh, or light, uh, no, dif no practical differences for use. And they have their command, git tag show the tag, git tag a name show uh, create a lightweight tag, with minus a and minus m message create a, a annotated tag, and tag show show all the data related, uh, related to a tag. Branches, like the master branch or a new feature branch, are used to develop features that are isolated from each other. I already said that the master branch is the default branch when you create a repository, local repository. And the idea is, here is that you can create a branch for each new feature, and then after the completion of a new feature, you can merge back the new feature branch to the master branch and proceed on the master branch. Um, again, some common git branch a name create a new branch with those name. Git branch list, is, list all existing branch, check out switch from one branch to another, git checkout master switch from the current branch to the master branch, for example, a git branch minus d branch name remove the branch. Last but one thing, hosted, hosted git. I, in my example, I always say the remote repository or GitHub. GitHub is an hosted Git service. It's a way, not the only one, but a way to have at least one remote repository. The alternative is take a computer, install Git, a Git server, and use this as a remote repository. As a remote repository. The most popular are these four here. GitHub is really popular, then Bitbucket, Bitbucket is, 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 is written is in Python. SourceForge, that supports also SVN. And Codeplex by Microsoft. Well, GitHub is a commercial company. By default, it charges for account that maintains private repository. If you create an account, you have to create, if you must create an account on GitHub you can have infinite public repository. If you, want, if you want to have one private repository, you have to pay. Public repositories are seen from every, everybody in the world. Private repository can, also, can only be accessed by you and the person you selected. For students, they give for free for two years, if I don't remember, if I remember correctly, a micro plan for students at, in this, at this address, education.github.com, that consists in unlimited public repository as the free account and five private repositories for two years. Bitbucket is similar to GitHub, we will use GitHub here because they donate for this course 50 private repository for your teamwork. Bitbucket is a little bit less used than GitHub. As a Mercurial support, GitHub not. 
is a commercial company in the same way uh, as GitHub, and uh, they give uh, free, private, and public repository for each user, but for a small team. You can have, at maximum, on a free Bitbucket uh, repository account, five collaborators. In GitHub, you can have an unlimited number of collaborators in any repository. A little bit different uh, idea. So they charge for project with bigger team, and it's free for academia, also for student. They give uh, forever, I, I remember, unlimited public and private repository, and unlimited user for single project. Up to the moment, you are a student or you are working in, a, in academia, in a college. We will use GitHub here, so homework. If you don't have a GitHub account, please create. It's sufficient, the free GitHub account. You can also create a student GitHub account with the student discount as you want, and then write your GitHub username as soon as possible on the Google Doc that is shared with the project. Because we need those to set up your repository, and you need, and you need the repository to create the website for the deliverable one that is due on the 29th of March. And then another homework. There is a 15 minutes tutorial on the website try.github.io. How do you create uh, your personal website on GitHub? We will use, uh, oi. we will use uh, GitHub Pages. GitHub Pages is a free way to host a website on your GitHub repository. So in, on your repository, you have a branch that will be named GH minus pages, GitHub pages, that will host your static website. Static, for static, I mean a website that is composed by HTML file plus CSS plus some JavaScript if you want. It's not mandatory. And you have, a, and your website will be reachable from an address like this, http mi2015.github.io slash the acronym of your project. At this link, you have some responses to most basic question. At this link, you have a tutorial on how to create a, um, GitHub Pages website, and I can tell you that is, there are three ways to create a GitHub uh, Pages. The first one is write some HTML code by end and put it on the GH Pages branch on your repository. Git add, git commit, git push, git pull, etc. The second way is to use uh, uh, a tool that is available online that you where you can select a template and then you have some text field where you can write some text and then press the button publish and the website will be published and the third one it's a little bit more complex it is use a generator of static website like uh, Jekyll for example that is the, the, the software that run on GitHub Pages by default. So three ways you can pick the one that you prefer. We don't have any preferences. But here on your repository at this address must be present a website. Now, I, I would like today to, to show you uh, a GitHub Pages, but uh, 
we don't have internet, the Wi-Fi today, so it's uh, it's really unlucky. Let's retry for the 10th time. Uh, in the end of this slide, we have some references. There is uh, some documentation, some guide, uh, some online book about version control and, uh, and Git, some graphical client, the address of the Eclipse plugin, just in case uh, is not uh, installed. Let's try another time. Let's try on Polito. Then, do you have any question? Who already knows, or sorry, Git and version control system were totally new for you today, or uh, someone, not someone? Let's try with this other. Wait. Non so come. Non so come tornare su questo computer. No, sei sul mio. Let's try with this other computer and then uh, okay. Okay, so let's try there is a browser uh, no Firefox. 
here. No. Okay. Uh. So one moment. Ah, no. Come non detto. And have the authentication code. Okay, this is a, a GitHub account. When you create your own GitHub account, you have here, not all of these, only two. One is your username, and the other will be MEI 2015. In MEI 2015, you will see your and our um, commit repositories. And uh, if you go inside uh, a repository, for example, Python Intermediate, um, you see all the files. You can also see a preview of the file. You can also edit uh, online uh, here the file. And you see here branches. There is only one branch that is the master in this moment. And uh, if there is a readme, you see the readme here at the end. And if you go on commits, you see the four commit of this project. If I, if I want to return to the first commit, for example, I can click on it and then browse file, and I see all the file on the first commit that has been done on five days ago. If we take another repository, for example, um, this one. You see, every commits. The latest one is of June, and then the first one, I don't know, May. 2014, and uh, no, sorry. This is uh, one of the project uh, of uh, this course last year, and you see that there is the branch master, and that is the there is a GH Pages branch. If you go on the GH Pages branch, you see that change everything here. And this is the website that this group, I mean, realized last year. So one repository for, for group, two branches. In reality, you will have two repositories for group. One is your a real repository where you have to put the code, where you have to create your GH pages branch, and the repository that we see for the exam. And the other will be something named uh, Git experiment uh, a number. Each, each group uh, has a Git experiment a number. That is a repository where you can, uh, well, experiment with Git and we never look at this repository. You can do whatever you want on this repository. A GitHub Pages. No. 
no. This is the GitHub Pages website with some example. And then you, here there is a tutorial on how to create a project site. We need a project site. You can generate a site. So there is, uh, well, the instruction, go to settings, press automatic page generator, and then add some content, and pick a theme, a template, and then you have done. Or you can start from scratch. So you have to create by end a GH pages branch, create some files, like an index.html, commit the file, and so on. Or use Jekyll, for example, to create the same files you put there. So, for example. So for example, no, sorry, work wrong course. New repository, this is the page for create a new repository on Git. So a repository name, spaces will be converted in minus. So for example, my project, uh, an optional description, if I want that the repository will be public or private, in this case I can do some private repository because we have 50 repository in this course, in this group. I'll put it public. And then I can delete. And this is an empty repository with some instruction to realize your first commit that is the same things I already said to you before. And if you go to, there is some uh, um, in tools here, issues, it's a list of problem or to do or things that doesn't work on your repository. You can open here an issue, a text file, in where you say, okay, this doesn't work, fix it. And then as a reminder, you see here and then you can close this issue, open another issue and so on. A, a wiki, some graph, that is empty right, right now, where you see how many people collaborate, who create, how many commit each member of the team will perform, and so on. And a setting where you find the GitHub pages, automatic page creator. This is the template for create a GitHub pages with a project name, a tagline, and so on, with some example text. It, this text is written in Markdown, that is a template format. Uh, it's, a, it's, a way, it's a way to write some text and that is then converted automatically in HTML. So for example, this is an header of third level because we have a tree of these. This is, um, well, this is a code. It's written as a code, so we change the, the charter, the font, and then you can have some links and so on. So we publish this, continue to layout. We choose a layout. So this is the code I told you before. This is the header, title. This is some link, and we can change uh, template. Uh, I don't know. This one, for example. Publish, and we see that we have a branch now that is GH pages. We don't have a master branch because no one created. And if, if we go on uh, MEI, 2015.github.io, not, not .com, slash my project. You see the website that I just created here with all the content. 
and then if you want to edit this, you can download it on your computer, open this file, or from here, you can edit this file and change change whatever you want and then commit changes on the remote repository directly. OK. Now I delete this project. This is since, uh, where is? OK. And for today is everything. Uh, have a good night.